Our letters are made for looking at. They are drawn on flat and have complex curves and lines. They're easy to distinguish visually. But it's not ideal for feeling them. It's easier to make the raised dots than the raised letters. It's easier to feel and distinguish the raised dots than the raised letters. It's also worth mentioning that English Braille is not a one-to-one -one transcription of the English alphabet anyway. Grade 1 Braille almost is, but that's barely used outside of teaching literacy. The standard is Grade 2 Braille which has hundreds of additional symbols representing sounds which use more than one letter, e.g., ch, as well as using abbreviations and contractions to make reading and writing more efficient. https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash english underscore braille. Actually, the system that braille replaced used raised letters. It was designed specifically because that older system was an utter failure for all the reasons listed by the other commenters. This is true. Lewis Braille was an avid reader and frustrated by the limited selection in his library due to the previous method of raised, embossed letters and took it upon himself to design a more effective system when he was a teenager using his father's leather working tools. ETA. The embossed system was called Howie. It was made by laying copper wires between two sheets of paper. It was complicated, expensive, bulky, and did not allow for blind children to learn to write. Valentine Howie was a sighted philanthropist. Here's a quick exercise to try. Pull a credit or debit card with raised numbers out of your wallet. Try to read them by feel. It's very difficult to do and most people just can't. Now get something with some bumps on it and count the bumps by feel. Almost anyone can do that. Numbers and letters are made to look at. They're very difficult to distinguish by feel. But counting bumps by feel? We can do that. Oh sure, pal. Hey I came here for answers not homework assignments. Letters were designed for being looked at. They don't translate well when trying to just use your fingertip. Dot. Dots on the other hand are easier to distinguish at that size. Braille needs to be identifiable by touch. And only touch. There are several letters that are shaped similarly enough. AB versus AP versus AQ versus AD. Or C versus E. That simply printing them as though they were meant for an audience that asterisk could asterisk asterisk see them would be challenging. That's before we get into capital versus lower case printing. What's the difference between Q and Q? Does the typeface it's printed in affect legibility? Braille's raised dots allow enough possible combinations to avoid that confusion. To add to this, the resolution of the sense of touch is actually quite poor. Dot. If you close your eyes and have a friend poke you gently with either one or two pens, you won't be able to tell the difference if they're less than a certain distance apart. Dot. Braille is spaced out just slightly further apart than the minimum distance to accurate sense each dot separately with one of if not the most high resolution touch part of your body. Using anything but dots would force you to write everything in a larger font. The old system was either raised letters or letters carved into wax. There were some major downsides to this. It's hard to distinguish the curves and shapes of letters when they're small, so the letters had to be really big meaning something like a book or an instruction manual would be impractical to make. Asterisk letters took a lot of time and focus to decode, meaning by the time you were finished reading the last word of a sentence, you forgot what the first word was. Asterisk because of the size and cost of making these things, it meant not a lot of text was made in this format and the text that was was inaccessible to most blind people. The inventor of Braille was raised using this system and hated it so decided to invent a system which was super cheap, literally just a normal typewriter, except it punched holes in paper instead of punching ink, and an entire easily readable letter could fit underneath a normal person's finger, making it very quick to decode and taking up barely more space than a standard print character. It's easier for users to read, but there is also another system of letters for the blind called Moon. It's more closely based on Latin type. More info. https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash moon underscore type.
greater than as the characters are quite large and over half the letters bear a strong resemblance to the print equivalent. Moon has been found particularly suitable for those who lose their sight later in life or for people who may have a less keen sense of touch. I had heard a story about the guy who invented Braille. As a note. Yes he was blind. Essentially, letters were his first thought. So he did that first. But they took so long to read with his fingers that he'd often forget what the word, sentence said by the end. So his solution was dots. A lot of people say that letters were meant to be looked at. I want to add a tiny bit onto that. Our brain is very good at noticing certain patterns, such as corners, edges, or circles. Pattern recognition helped early humans detect and avoid a hiding predator or find prey. Letters and numbers capitalize on our pre-built pattern recognition by incorporating those patterns into very distinct ways. Letters and numbers are most easily distinguishable by the locations and kinds of their intersections, then by curves and such. This is why people are saying letters were designed to be looked at. They used to be raised letters, before Louis Braille created Braille. In order for blind folks to be able to read by touch, the letters had to be very large, otherwise it was difficult to tell the difference between some of the letters. Books were huge even more so than brailled books are now, and reading was a long process. A page might contain a single sentence. While at a school for the blind, young braille was exposed to a dot code the military was trying out. It was better, but still not great. Lewis decided to make it better, and was able to write out a book as his teacher was reading it with his resulting alphabet. For a great picture book, Check out https colon slash slash bookshop.org slash books slash six dash dots dash a dash story dash of dash young dash lewis dash braille slash nine seven eight zero four four nine eight one three three seven nine. Basically, it's about your ability to feel. Dot. Our letters are made to buy read by sight. Straight lines, curves, loops. Dot. But that really really sucks when you're trying to separate them by touch. Instead, a consistent grid of raised dots is a lot easier to feel out. Anecdotally, I have a few blind friends and none of them read Braille. Less than 10% of blind Americans can read it. The percentage will keep dropping too. Smartphones and computers can read aloud, and TV and audiobooks are your friends. Many movies have audio description options. I truly enjoy listening to the audio descriptions when I watch movies alone. I'm not blind. It adds to the movie and feels like watching a book. There were pre-Braille methods of raised writing for the blind, such as Boston Line Letter, and the similar dotted night reading method which represented syllables. As I recall, when compared to Boston Line Letter, Braille was quicker to write for those learning, more cost-effective to print in books, and I think there were some problems with determining how to write some words using night reading. The system before Braille was exactly that, raised letters. This was how Lewis Braille learned to read by touch. However it was a slow process to read raised letters, and you would often forget what you read by the end of the sentence. Braille was invented to improve on this system and proved to be a more efficient system. As the son of a blind father and as someone who has worked with the visually impaired, it's because it's much easier to read the dots. I love that so many people are answering this with detail and with some accuracy to one degree or another but you just cut to the chase. Dot. It's dots because dots are easier to read. Dot. Love it. In addition to the other reasons given, it's easier to form a series of raised dots by hand than to make perfectly raised letters without mistakes, so people can write braille without having a stamp for each letter and an easily moldable material. Dot. This goes into one of the methods used. HTTP colon slash slash www.brailleauthority.org slash slate stylus slash slate dot html. Things like a small letter A, O, zero, and O could all, feel, alike. There are other characters that might, feel, the same as well. Then you could consider that something using raised lettering for the sight impaired might get worn down. So at some point the letter A or E could get worn down in a way that it starts to, feel, like the letter O. 
The letters J and G and Y could at some point start to feel the same, as another example. I'm being English-centric. But there is a braille for Russian Cyrillic as well. HTTPS colon slash slash www.vectorstock.com slash royalty dash free dash vector slash braille dash Cyrillic dash alphabet dash letters dash vector dash two three seven five four two one seven closing parenthesis. The link is to a list of Russian characters and their braille equivalent. You can see the Cyrillic characters and can probably make some good guesses as to which ones would be easy to confuse by feel especially after the raised characters started to wear down. Because Lewis Braille wanted a way to distinguish letters quickly by touch and letters are a visual text. Braille is based upon, night writing. Created by Charles Barbier during the Napoleonic era. Developed to send military messages that could be read without light. Lewis Braille used the same tools developed to create the raised dots used in night writing and standardized the writing around the concept. It's a lot easier to distinguish patterns of dots than it is with letters, as there could be different fonts used and whatnot whereas the dots are universal. Try this. Take your debit, credit card and close your eyes. Try to feel the raised letters on it for your name or the other details, providing they are raised on your card. It's actually very difficult to do. There was actually such a system tried, called Moontype, named after its inventor William Moon. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash moon underscore type closing parenthesis. Goddamn moonrunners. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot reddit dot com slash r slash dark souls three slash comments slash five gk eight pz slash i underscore don't underscore read underscore moon underscore runes underscore what underscore do underscore these underscore symbols underscore on slash closing parenthesis. I am very surprised that more answers are not emphasizing how much easier it is to build a machine to produce raised dots in just a few positions compared to other options. As someone who works with those machines let me tell you it is very annoying the many ways they break laughing face. The origin if I'm not mistaken was French cryptography with the criteria that it could be read without candle light during night, and then later adapted for the blind. If someone was writing on your back and you have to decipher it, would it be easier deciphering letter written on your back or a series of touches? Dot. So many letters look essentially the same and different handwriting makes it worse. Whereas Braille and Morse code can easily be determined directly from feel. Oh okay. Fun fact. There's a high chance that plate, book or anything else with Braille on it was made by an inmate that's been certified. In print all right. I would like to go to the store. In braille, brl. That'd be, iwdl to g to the, saint, or. In print it looks smaller. But because of the size of each cell, character, braille books get giant. Giant. HTTPS colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash r slash interesting gasfuck slash comment slash if viti slash this underscore is underscore what underscore one underscore Harry underscore Potter underscore book underscore looks underscore like underscore in slash question mark UTM underscore source equals share and UTM underscore medium equals iOS underscore app and UTM underscore name equals iOS SMF. And anything requiring more details would need to be a lot bigger for two-point discrimination. One of my childhood friends. His mother taught to blind kids. Neither of them were blind, though. There are some raised letters, but they were not being used widely at the time, 1980s, and considered out of date and fairly useless. They are difficult to read, asterisk fast, asterisk, or at least reading braille is faster. Raised letters have too much that can go wrong with them in a flat book, for instance. They also have to be huge, so they take up more paper, and then there is no standard font, so. Dot. Also, it's not a letter-to-letter -letter exchange. Like sign language, you can spell a word, but most Braille uses phonetics to speed things up, like stenography does. Before Braille. They actually used a flashlight to draw letters in the air for blind people. 
It turned out that it was not very effective. Braille is like Morse code. It is far more efficient and easier to interpret the messages from blinks of the flashlight message than letters drawn in the air. This is why Braille is raised dots and not raised letters. Braille is done with the dot system because embossed letters can be confused for other letters when turned in different directions. For example P, D, B, and Q can all be derived from the same formation depending on the way it's turned. It would also have to be very big to be able to discern the shapes. Braille is smaller and saves ion space especially when you go into grade 2 Braille and contractions. I just heard a very interesting podcast about it all. Well-meaning sighted administrators tried to cram a type of raised alphabet that looked like our own into the marketplace. There were many different systems and it was delaying blind people access for about 100 years from when Lewis Braille first invented an easier-to-read system. Imagine closing your eyes and feeling the letter Q. Is that an O with the rounded top? No, maybe a D with that small protrusion at the top. But that piece is small, so maybe it's an O written without that curl at the top. But it had a down shaft I didn't feel. O. Oh, it must be a Q. Dot. Now imagine closing your eyes and feel the difference between dot quote and this one is two dots in the lower section. This one is three dots and I can feel what position they're in. Okay, I'm done. I read a book about the guy who invented Braille in I think middle school and the short version is that the books with the raised letters were just too bulky. I can't remember the title of that book but it was really interesting.